Fractures of the calcaneus. Fractures of the calcaneus can be open or closed. Open fractures can be a big problem. Mechanism of injury. The primary fracture line is caused by an axial load injury. The primary fracture line goes from anterolateral to posteromedial. The primary fracture line divides the calcaneus into two main fragments. The subromedial fragment, the constant fragment, and it is called the sesentacular fragment and the subrolateral fragment, or the tuberosity fragment. The subromedial fragment includes the sesentaculum tali, and it is stabilized to the talus by ligaments. So the talus is attached to the constant fragment. The sesentacular fragment is a useful reference point for fracture reduction. The flexor hallucis longus tendon lies underneath the sesentaculum, and if a screw placement to the sesentacular fragment is too long, this could affect the flexor hallucis longus tendon, causing fixed flexion of the big toe. Classification of calcaneal fracture The Essex leprosity classification. They have two types either a tongue type or joint depression type. The tongue type, the posterior facet, is attached to the tuberosity. However, in the joint depression type, the posterior facet is not attached to the tuberosity. In the tongue type, the primary fracture line exit anterolaterally and posteromedially. The secondary fracture line appears beneath the posterior facet and exit posteriorly through the tuberosity. The suprolateral fragment and the posterior facet are attached to the tuberosity. Tongue type fracture could be treated with close reduction and screw fixation. Then we go to the joint depression type. The primary fracture line splits the calcaneus obliquely through the posterior facet and exit anterolaterally and posteromedially. The secondary fracture line exit superiorly just behind the posterior facet. The posterior facet is a free fragment. It's usually the lateral portion of the posterior facet that is involved and depressed. Sanders classification used to guide the treatment and to predict the outcome of treatment, and it is done based on the number of fracture fragments of the posterior facet as seen in coronal CT scan. Type 1, non-displaced fractures treated non-operatively. Type 2, two-part fracture of the posterior facet. Type 3, three-part fracture of the posterior facet. Sanders type 2 and 3 calcaneal fracture will benefit from surgery of reduction and fixation. Type 3 usually gets more arthritis because it has more fragments and it may end by fusion. Type 4, highly comminuted and may require primary subtalar arthrodesis. Calcaneal avulsion fracture is an important topic. It is an emergency. It needs urgent reduction and internal fixation to prevent a skin complication. In joint depression fracture of the calcaneus, you wait for the swelling to go down before surgery. In avulsion fracture of the calcaneus, it's an emergency. You don't wait. You do an emergency surgery. Open reduction and internal fixation of the calcaneus is generally delayed for one to two weeks to allow for improvement of the soft tissue swelling. Except with fractures of the posterior tuberosity, the avulsion fracture, which can cause skin tinting, an urgent reduction is recommended.
What are the associated conditions with calcaneal fractures? A spine fracture about 10%. Compartment syndrome of the foot about 10%. And if it is neglected, it will lead to cloth hose due to contracture of the intrinsic flexor muscles. Calcaneo cuboid joint involvement in about 60%. Bilateral fracture of the calcaneus in about 10%. Perineal tendon subluxation can occur with calcaneal fractures. It may be detected on axial CT scan and may be seen as an avulsion fracture of the fibula on x-rays. Complication rate is high. Factors associated with poor outcome are age older than 50 years of age, smoking, early surgery, history of a fall, heavy manual labor, obesity, males, bilateral injury, workman's compensation, and peripheral vascular disease. Men do worse with calcaneal fractures than women. We have two scenarios, a man with calcaneal fracture and a woman with calcaneal fracture. The man with calcaneal fracture is workman's compensation, heavy labor, zero bowler angle. He probably will end with a subtalar fusion. Fracture of the calcaneus are better if the patient is a female. If the patient is younger and if the patient have a simple fracture. Radiology, you want to know about bowler angle which is measured on lateral x-rays. It is usually about 20 to 40 degrees, and this is how it is measured. Decrease in bowler angle indicate collapse of the posterior facet. How about the Harris view or the axial view? This is how it is done. You can see the calcaneus is shortened and widened with varus. How about CT scan? The axial cut will show the calcaneal cuboid joint and the perineal tendon subluxation. The sagittal view will show the subtalar joint and its depression. The coronal view will show the posterior facet displacement. It can also show the number of the joint fracture fragments as seen in coronal CT scan. As we know, the surgical outcome of calcaneal fractures correlate with the number of the joint fracture fragments and the quality of reduction. The MRI shows the stress fracture of the calcaneus and the integrity of the perineal tendons. The stress fracture of the calcaneus may be misdiagnosed as plantar fasciitis. The stress fracture usually occurs in female runners. You will have a swelling, tenderness with medial and lateral compression of the hind foot. They call it the compression test or the squeeze test. And if it is positive, it could mean a stress fracture of the calcaneus. And if the x-ray is normal or appear normal, you need to get an MRI. And you will see the fracture in T1 as a linear streak or a band of low signal intensity in the posterior calcaneal tuberosity. And in T2, you will find an increased signal. Complication of calcaneal fractures. We start with wound complications. Wound-related complications are the most common complication, about 20%. It occurs more in smokers, in diabetics, and in patients with open fractures. How about open fractures of the calcaneus? If it is grade 1 and grade 2 open fractures, and the wound is medially, you can do lateral incisions. But you don't do ORIF in grade 3 medial wounds and in most lateral wounds.
Open fractures of the calcaneus may lead to amputation. There is a high risk of infection. Another complication is malunion of the calcaneus. You will find widening of the heel and various deformity and loss of height. The talus is dorsiflexed, limiting dorsiflexion of the ankle. Another complication is perineal tendon irritation and impingement from the lateral wall. How about surgery on the calcaneus? Surgery definitely decreases the risk of post-traumatic arthritis. Tongue type fracture may benefit from closed reduction and percutaneous fixation or open reduction and internal fixation. Joint depression type usually needs open reduction. Subtalar distraction arthrodesis plus insertion of a bony block and rigid internal fixation is a good operation that's usually done for calcaneal fracture that is associated with loss of height and limited dorsiflexion of the ankle. This operation improves tailor inclination and decreases anterior ankle impingement and it will take care of the arthritis in the subtalar joint. How about the extensile lateral approach? The lateral calcaneal artery provides blood supply to the lateral flap associated with the calcaneal extensile approach. Be aware that the sural nerve is in the vicinity of the surgical area. Extensal approach has delayed wound healing in about 20% of cases. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.